We're with Eliezer Sherbatov, who was playing with HC Mariupol of the Ukrainian Hockey League, and he's now back in Canada. First of all, Eliezer, just just how are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm I'm exhausted. I just came back uh, this night um, from uh, well last night, a couple of hours ago. Um, from this long trip, so I'm I'm very exhausted. I, I haven't ate or slept in the past days. So um, just to see uh, your family and familiar faces, it's starting to get better. Eliezer, what has the past two weeks been like for you, and what was your journey from Ukraine uh, across borders and and now into back home in Canada? Um, to be honest, it's 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 a long journey. Um, so my team is situated in Mariupol, where, as of today, it has been taken by the Russians. Um, but we had a game in Kramatorsk, which is also a north of Mariupol, which is Donetsk Oblast, which has military bases and have the Russian tanks, and there's war uh, waging there, where it started. Um, so we had a game there. So we're we're we're, we're driving by bus. It's five hours uh, north of Mariupol, and um, we we stopped at the, our hotel in Drushkivka. I'm ready to to I'm ready to play my hockey game. I'm ready I'm ready to win. Uh, I'm going to bed at the hotel, and for me, I have a hockey game the next day. Um, everybody's ready. Um, Playoffs are, 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 are within our graphs, graphs, so everybody's focused. At 5 a.m., I'm, I'm sleeping. At 5 a.m., I, I, I hear, boom! And it's, it's a, a sound that you, 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 you never hear that, that strong of a sound. It was so loud that I woke up. I wake up and I see throughout the window, uh, through the window, it's, it's, so it's night, so you see a, a light right going through the window, and it just, and it goes like this. And it wakes me up, so I'm, I'm looking around. I check my teammates that are with me in the room. They, they, they woke up, and then you hear another boom, and it starts shaking. The, 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 everything is, is shaking. So, so a couple of meters away, the war started. And I cannot believe what is happening. So I'm not sleeping. And in the morning, uh, we, we receive a text the meeting at the breakfast. Uh, in, in at breakfast, so coach comes at breakfast and he says, "Guys, uh, the war is started. Um, it's unfortunate, but I would suggest you to stay put." as a team, but if you you choose to leave, it's your decision. So how I feel right now, uh, how I felt that time, I, all my, everything from my body wanted to come out because war is started. You have the Russian tanks from, from east side and you have, and Belarus from uh, north and you have the Ukrainians on, on the west side that is, from one side and the other, taking your city. So where you need to go, what to do, you don't know. And you, you start to think. People say, we need to go to bomb shelters and everything. I say, I cannot believe what is happening. And um, it was a long journey. It was a, it was a long journey. And um, yeah, so that, that's how it started. Eliezer, was there ever a point where, where you feared for your safety or, or your own life? So you have to understand, there, there's war happening right in our city. Guys that is 10 kilometers away, they, put, um, they, they, they called one of my teammates and he puts his phone and you see the, the guns. Da, 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 and... <laughs> You fear for your life every second. So for me, I'm I'm taking my legs. I'm I'm going down, and and, and I don't know what's happening. Uh, 
uh, it's fear for your life every second. Every second, uh, you think I'm surviving uh, or I'm dying. So you cannot sleep. You cannot. It's very hard. To, it's very hard for me to explain uh, how I felt. How I felt. It's um, people hiding, putting uh, mattresses, and I'm I'm trying to to. trying to 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 understand where am i and in which situation i am and everybody says we need to go to a bomb shelter so what happened is that we were right in front of the um right in front of the uh, uh, um, um train station in drushkivka our hotel And it, this it was the only path to leave uh, Donetsk Oblast. Um, so two days later, my, my uh, me and one of uh, the guys that I play against, we go there and we need to leave. We're the only Europeans, Canadians. Um, and we got a, a ticket to Lvov, uh, to the city, uh, to the border of uh, um, of Ukraine. But it's it's right all the way west. Of Ukraine, so you need to go through three cities that war is waging. By the time I wait for my tick for my ticket, um, I'm calling the Canadian embassy. I'm asking, please help me. Uh, there's war. There's people. People are dying. Civilians. I cannot go back home to Mariupol down south because uh, there's the Russians that are coming, and it's already bombing. So I left absolutely everything. I had one backpack. I had my tooth, toothbrush. I had. Um, th that's it. It was just a backpack that you go for one game. I had nothing. So I'm calling the Canadian embassy. No answer. I'm I'm writing them an email, and they they write me back uh, automatic reply. We will uh, be with you shortly. A day later, they send me a, a copy-paste email that I send. They send to everybody. Go to a bomb shelter. Believe me, if if I would listen and go to a bomb shelter, I would be right now in a bomb shelter, and on top of me, there would be Russian and and Ukrainian tanks killing each other. So I had to make a decision. So I'm waiting for my train. For my train for two days i'm not eating i'm not sleeping because it's impossible because you feel for your life every single time every single second and um, um our train is late our, our train that goes to lvov because we received the call that the train the trains are getting shot as of now so the third guy that was supposed to come with us, he tells me, I'm not going because I don't want to die. It's a 50-50% chance. That's what they said. That's a 50-50% chance. You go to the train, you die. So tell me, what would you do? What decision you would take? You go, you stay, you go to a bomb shelter, and you hope with, with nothing, you hope that a person doesn't put a grenade inside the bomb shelter or you don't get um with all the dirt and the houses that goes on top of it and you just die on, on, on under the the under the, the 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 bomb shelter or you take the train and you have a 50 50 percent chance to survive so what decision you can take i don't know i i i i didn't know at the time so i called my dad and it is the person that really kept me mind clear like you know to calm me down and i'm very grateful so again very disappointed in the canadian uh, government that uh, didn't aren't helping the, their fellow citizen uh, canadian citizens to get out so right away i receive a call from the israeli israeli embassy with the israeli um um volunteers that are waiting for us in Lvov. So I made the decision that my train got late, but
but I made a decision because my train wasn't supposed to come. So me and my dad, we made the decision that if God, with God's will, the train comes, it's because he wants you to get inside that train and go to Lvov. Why the trains are getting shot? Because they're going through Kramatorsk, where there's war. There, it, the train goes through Kharkiv, where civilians are dying, and it goes through Kiev, where it's all center city, in the city, uh, center of the cities. And we're going through. So imagine the 24 hours I need to, um, how I felt those 24 hours. I, I call this train the, the train of death. Because every single second you think you're gonna you're gonna get shot. Because it's army everywhere. And you don't know which one. So I, by God's will, I we got to we got to Lvov. We got to Lvov. We went to my friend is uh, Lithuanian uh, from Latvia. So we went to the Latvian thank thank you to the Latvian uh, consulate. We went there, and then we went to the Israeli uh, Israeli consulate where the volunteers, amazing people, amazing organization. And um, after this, they got us on a bus with 17 people, elderly kids and women. And they made me uh, um, responsible for those 17 people because nobody in the consulate was... Uh, um, was coming with us because they need to wait. So they... they put me responsible for the 17 people. And I'm telling you, it was the hardest thing I ever done in my life to be responsible for 17 people when when life and death, it's a matter of life and death. So let me tell you, when we got to, to Warsaw, Poland, walking for 10 hours, uh, be, being outside for hours and hours at the borders um, and getting stopped uh, by people with guns, the, and explaining that we are from the Israeli embassy and I had to be talking and not in Russian because then the, in Lvov you cannot speak Russian anymore. So I had to explain we all stick together. And uh, when we got to Warsaw, Poland, and it was, uh, it was special. It was very special. So what was the feeling when, when you arrived in Canada and, and this, you you got to be back home and and see your family. What was what was that moment like for you? I spoke once to my wife. I spoke once to my wife, and uh, at the beginning, the first day, I look at her and I, I'm st I start to cry because you cannot you cannot tell her you cannot tell her I'm I'm, I'm about to die. You cannot tell that to your wife, and and and. You cannot, so you have to, you have to explain to her that everything is going to be okay. So that was the only time I spoke to her and uh, by, by, by FaceTime before, before uh, arriving in, in, uh, in Poland. Um, but when I got, when I got home to my family, it's, it's emotion, it's crying. I, 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 I met my 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 son for the first time, and I thought I would never never see them. I would thought I would never see see, see my family, and I met my son for the first time. So, I my they were sleeping and my daughter was sleeping, and I just went to bed beside her. I hugged her and I just stayed there, just crying and stayed there. It's it's. Are are you in touch with? some of your teammates from Mariupol and do you know how they're doing yeah. right now? Yeah, as, as, as of now, Mariupol has been taken by Russians. It's war. They, they were, were in talk. They, they, in front of the, the, their houses, they're, they're, they're shooting buildings in Kharkiv, in Kiev, in Mariupol. I'm in talk with everybody. It's war. And finally, just for you, you know, you're back in Canada now. What, what are your next steps, and and have you thought about what what your future uh, looks like here in Canada? 
Yeah. I don't know. Just be with my family. I lost everything. I left everything there. I don't know. Just, just be here with my family. <laughs> you think you're you're not gonna you're not gonna come back? You never see you're gonna never see your parents and uh, yeah. The only thing you want to do now is is to be with your family for the rest of your life. Thank you so much for joining us, Eliezer.